this is Shalimar Steinberg, and today we are talking about assignment seven, which is using orthographic views and hatching to create a section view of an object. So I have opened up my A and B size template, so I have my B size title block available here. And right now I'm going to be drawing in model space. I'm starting out on my object line layer, and I'm going to start out um, by drawing the um, bottom view, I believe, of my, or the front view, sorry, of my object. So I'm going to go along one edge, and if I look at my objects here, I'm going to start out over here and draw this edge down, and then go over and up and in, etc., and follow it around, because that way I know how far I'm making this edge from here and can control this circle, and then I'll use fill it to give myself the rounding that I need here. So my first point is going to be up straight point nine three seven, and you can see that's pretty small, so I have to zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Then I go up an additional point one eight eight. I know that I'm going over 3.125, and these measurements are all on the um, original drawing. Okay, so then I'm going to start back down here, and I'm going to go over the complete distance of the object, uh, which is, let's see, 4.5 plus 1.5, so that's 6. And then I'm going to go up, and I'm going up this distance here. And the reason I got my 4.5 is because I know it's 4.5 here, and then this rounded edge is a radius of 1.5, so I added those together. Okay, so now I'm going up my 0.688, and then in, and my inward section is... This is one where I have to do a little bit of math mentally here. Okay. Oh, yeah, the easiest way to do it is just use my object snaps and tracking. So I hovered and then dragged down with the green line until it's even. That's the right one? Nope, that's not the right one. Okay, I'm going to come back to that portion in just a second. And I know that this line, there's a gap of 0.75, so 0.75. And then I go up again, another 0.75, and over to where this one meets, and straight down. Now I can do the fillet here now, or I can wait a little bit until I um, am ready for it. And I need to figure out the total spacing distance. So let's see here. From the drawing, this is a little bit complex. I know that this circle, meaning this gap to this gap, is one. Then I also know that from this center to the outside here is 1.5. So I know basically that from this center line to the outside here is 1.5. And then I know from this drawing that that center line over to this edge, which is the edge that I need here, is 6.25. So 1.5 plus 6.25 is 2.125. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go in here and 2.125. And then up, just so it matches this one, and over. Okay, so I've got my first basic object drawn. Um, and I know from the drawing that the radius of this fillet should be 0.5. So I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to 
go to the fillet command. And the first thing I'm going to do is type R for radius, and then type 0.5. And it's going to ask me for the lines that I want it to fill it. And I do these two. And now I have my basic bottom object. Now from this, I want to make sure that I do the spacing of my side view and my top view evenly off of this object in order to uh, be able to use a miter line. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw one line on each of those views. So I'm going to go up exactly two from here and start my side view or my top view. Um, and I'm just doing this as a placeholding line basically because when I draw my um, curved view, it's actually going to be farther over. Uh, so, and then come in here, let's say 0.15, or 1.5, sorry. Six. So the question asked was how long is the bottom line here, and that's six inches. So then I'm going to go into the line command and I'm going to go over from here exactly two inches as well and draw my top or my side view straight here. Now that I've done that, what I can do is go into my construction line layer and I can draw and what I'm looking for is I'm using the object snap tracking to find where the basic corner would be if this object continued. And then I'm drawing a line, and I want that line to be far enough out so that it's going to extend past um, either of my other objects. And then I'm going to hit Tab, and I'm going to type 45 degrees. So now I have my miter line. What that means is as I draw my top view, I can transfer portions of it over onto that miter line, and then from there transfer those portions straight down onto my side view to find all my hidden lines and everything. So I'm going to go back to my construction line layer, and I'm going to go in, and again, if I look at my view, I know this section here is 0.5, and then the actual circle itself is a radius of 1, so the total height there is going to be 3 inches, because it's 0.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0.5. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to draw... a three inch section here. And then I will draw over the total distance over to this center point here, which is 4.5. So 4.5. And then I'm going to put in the line that is right here which is even with the top edge of this edge here. So I'm going to come up from my front view for that line. So I'm going to hover here but not click on it, drag up, and where it touches, that's where I click, and then draw through, and that gives me my solid edge. Now I'm going to draw in for just a second a construction line here. And that shows me exactly how far to pull this back or trim it back so that it matches up uh, with the top view. And then I can add on my circle. I'm also going to draw a construction line right now that I'm going to turn on my O-snap for midpoints. And I'm going to use the midpoint of this line and draw one to here. And then I'm going to extend it out another 1.5 because that's how far out my circle needs to come. These are not the only ways that I can do this. They're just fairly simple ways of figuring out where things are placed so that I can easily um, put them in. So now I'm going to go back to my object lines, and I'm going to create a circle. Um, I have different ways of creating that circle. I could do it with the exact radius that I know that it has, or I can do a three-point circle because I know the three points since I have my construction lines. I can say this one, this one, and this one. 
and it draws the circle that fits all of those. And then I can go in and I can trim out the sections that I don't need. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the trim command. And I'm going to start back here. And then go to this one and this one. Now I have the rounded portion of my top view drawn. I'm going to do another circle back here and trim to this one. Um, for this one, I'm just going to do the center radius. So I know that this is the center of my circle, and the radius of my circle is uh, 1 for this one. So I'll say 1, and then I just trim out the portions that I don't need. So I trim out this out here. And then I can trim out my solid lines in here that I don't actually need going through. So now I've got the two rounded outside edges. Um, and then I need to continue through with my interior circles here. And so this circle, I know the center of this circle is 1.875 in from the center edge out here. So it would actually have been easier to do that one before I trimmed out everything. So I'm probably going to go back and untrim just to make it simpler on myself. Okay, so I'm going to start another circle. And this one I'm going to do here. I'm dragging over. I haven't clicked yet. And I'm going to type that 1.8, what did I say? 75. Okay. And then it starts the circle there. And then I can tell it how big I want the circle to be, which is the interior circle is a diameter. So it's important that you notice that because right now it's saying radius. So I'm going to type D for diameter. And the diameter of that one is 5 points, or sorry, 0. 0.563. So I draw that one. Then I can do, and this time I can just do a diameter circle. So I don't have to worry about it. I do the same center point, And I type the 0. 0.875. And I have my secondary circle. Then I have another circle that I know is centered on the same point as my big circle here, which has a diameter of 1. So I'm going to put it at that center point and say 1. Now I have all the circles that I need. So again, I'm going to go in and do trim, and trim out this section and these sections now that I don't need them anymore. And um, now I can start putting on the construction line layer. And I'm going to start drawing lines over from every feature on my top view. And I say every feature, so I mean where the edges are of every single piece. And some of them are really close, so you're going to have to zoom in quite a bit. And for example, like I'm going to turn on the quadrant here so it makes it easier for me to get to this end point here. And then I'm going to go over, and over, Okay, now what I'm going to do is draw the same lines down, making sure that I'm starting at the intersections of them. And I'm going to draw them down basically to where the bottom of this object would be. And then I can go through and trace over them with white lines. And I can just draw them through. I don't have to draw them like a certain length. I just want to make sure they go through the object all the way. And you want to make sure that they're completely vertical, so at 90 degrees, etc. And when you're zoomed out far like I am, some of them look like they're right on top of each other, but when they zoom in, you can see that there is more space in between them. And then what you're doing is you also can then bring over the same points on the side view here. So all the hidden lines that you're going to have to show. 
and now you can trace them as either solid object lines or as hidden lines depending on what they are from the other objects. And then you're going to use your trim command in order to make them look appropriate on the side. Okay, once you've done that, then the thing that you're going to do is to um, finish drawing your lines where the circles are, etc. So I'm going to draw straight down from here. straight down from there. And then straight down from there. Okay, that one didn't work well. It wasn't so good enough to see well. Okay. And where the lines for the two circles here are. And if it's easier for you not to use the tracking, you can just draw the line down and then trim it. Okay, and you'll need to know the height of the inset, which is this little section here. That's that 0.188, and that way you can make the line across so that you can get everything set there. So you're going to draw one last line here, and that's the... I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to come down 0.188, and I'm going to draw that straight across here. And then I'm going to use trim and get rid of this section and this section. And actually, get rid of this section and this section. Okay, now I can put in my hatching. And so what I would do is I would go over here to hatch under the ellipse. And I'm going to make sure I have the ANSI 31 selected, which I do. Uh, I want it at one-to-one -one scale for this drawing. <coughs> Angle should be zero. And then I go inside and I look at where on the object was actually touched by this. Now I've drawn one section there. If I want to, I can close hatch creation and have that be separate section, or I can draw them all so that they are touching each other. And I need to get rid of that construction line so that that section isn't um, broken up by the construction line. There I go. And that is my hatching.